Now, let us finally apply this general philosophy and motivation that we explained in a previous section to actual physics challenge. And that will be taking a neural network and explaining how to use it to navigate an actual charge stability diagram. So, just as a reminder, within this general framework of different tuning levels, we are going to stay in this step three, where we are going to pretend that initial tune-up and quantum dot configuration has been taken care of. And what we want to do is to prepare a specific charge state in a quantum dot. We will take a double quantum dot and we will try to figure out how to load a simple charge state in it. So, charge stability diagrams, you have covered extensively already in this course. You know that they are a 2D mapping where you map your voltages of your, let's say, plunger gates on the, control, on the axis. And the color and the color bar gives you a behavior of how the current changes through your device. So whenever you have a big change, you know you made a charge transition in one of your dots. This particular is for a double quantum dot. And when I am transitioning to the, to the uh, horizontally to the right, I am changing charge in one of the dots. And when I, when I am transitioning vertically, I am changing the charge in the dot. Now, measuring this super beautiful charge stability diagram I am showing you here actually takes a lot of work, especially at this low distribution. This is something that we measured uh, in, in, uh, in the previous lab in Zurich uh, for, for one of the first experiments where we, where we were trying to replace the tuning with AI. So the first natural question you can ask is whether it is possible to navigate this charge stability diagram without measuring all of this data. And the answer to that question is actually really quick yes, right? Because if I want to navigate a charge stability diagram, in the end, the only thing I need to know if I am measuring a small subset is where the line goes, right? Because if I am crossing a horizontal line or a vertical line that's completely associated with a charge transition in one or the other dot, and if I am crossing two, I am just crossing two dots and so on. So, in principle, I could just measure these I could just measure these subsets and shift myself around as I want. There is a one obvious problem with that that you will immediately tell me, which is if I don't know what's my electron configuration in a starting patch, then how should I find out which state I am in? So indeed, for this sort of subset navigation of a charge stability diagram to work, you need to first unload your dot, get to zero, zero, and then start counting the transitions when you measure these small subsets or patches. I'm going to explain this in a, in a much bigger detail just in a moment. Let us now consider this super simple example where we just say that we don't want to be very ambitious for now because we are just taking our first steps towards using neural network. And let us try to say that the only thing we want is to start in a random space in a charge stability diagram and move ourselves automatically to state zero, zero, zero electrons in the right dot, zero electrons in the left with as little measurements as possible. So first step, is to have our ideal either measured or simulated data. This is the full charge stability diagram that I will have here just for a reference to check that what I did is uh, what I did is fine. So this is a theoretical simulated data from our package uh, that we made together with the students in my group. You have two examples here of a, of a charge stability diagram. One is the perfect noiseless one, another one is with noise. So if I draw a small window from this charge stability diagram, I will see that these four things that we discussed previously can happen. Either I draw a window that has a no transition, 
or I draw a window that has a vertical transition, horizontal transition, or both. In this no-noise data, you can distinguish these four cases from each other easily. When you look at the noisy data, it's not so simple with a naked eye and a very rough measurement distribution. Nonetheless, we forget about how difficult or simple it is for us as humans, and we can just jump into doing this neural network thing. We draw a lot of these patches, the small measurement sections, either using uh, experimental data or a simulated data. In our case, it's a simulated data, so it's very easy for us to assign the label to each of these each of these um, squares. And then we just train a neural network to take a square as an input and assign one of these four labels on the output. So for each patch that I show, I want to build a neural network model that gives me, is it a no line? Is it a horizontal transition? Is it a vertical transition? Or is it both? So I am not going to discuss super much how to how to do the architecture of this neural network because that's a machine learning problem. But if you start with a simple data from a, from a simulated chart stability diagrams, it shouldn't be super hard to just with some very basic architecture to achieve this four-way classification. Now, let's pretend we covered this, we trained the neural network, and now we embed it into our experimental flow. First thing you do is to draw a new chart stability diagram. Now, this is the key thing. We want to build the models that generalize to a new thing. So testing it on a chart stability diagram that was in a training set is not very smart. So we start by drawing a new chart stability diagram. In experiment, this would be just making a new experimental configuration or a new device. In a simulation, you just draw new random numbers for the parameters that specify your charge stability simulation. And then we pick this red square window to measure. The neural network will take this red square, classify it, and if correct, tells us shift diagonally. So we shift diagonally. We measure the next red square, neural network announce shift diagonally, then we take this square, and now we see that we only have the horizontal transition anymore. So then we have to shift down, and then we are measuring an empty window, and we know that we are done. So basically now, we arrived from some state that was deep in a charge stability to the zero, zero in this four simple step. We measure a subset, we classify, we move on. In this case, what the neural network does is just this local classification of the measurement window. And it is your job as an experimentalist to then write a Python script around this classification that takes the output that tells me it's a both line. And then you tell your plunger voltages to shift you diagonally down in your charge stability diagram and so on and so forth. There are some subtleties around this. Of course, if you pick your measurement window too small, it's a high probability that you will measure that you will measure like in a place that doesn't have any transition and stuff like that. So there is a few hyperparameters that sort of with your physics knowledge you need to adjust before you start training the algorithm so you don't introduce some biases that would that would corrupt this classification. So with that we are done with this part and we can move on on how this is done in an actual experiment.